are a racist, misogynistic asshole. They just don't know any better. They've been fed a bunch of lies. Everybody has their own perception of what is real. We don't have true free speech, only leftist speech. I'm a Christian before I say I'm, I'm an American. A big part of why it can't change his viewpoints is because he watches fucking Fox News all day. Everyone is talking about taxes. Everyone is talking about Corona. Well, what have they, anybody said something about the kids? So why should they vote? You really want my vote? You haven't even acknowledged me? <laughs> you know, do I matter? <laughs> Here we are. What was the conception for this project? Conception. I got laid off in the summer of 2020, right in the middle of the pandemic. I was trying to figure out what to do next. At the time, the elections were coming up in a couple of months, so the United States was in chaos. It was left versus right, Trump versus Biden. No one could get along. At least that was the narrative. And I was just kind of sitting there wondering, is there any common ground anymore? So I came up with this idea to rent an RV, travel around the United States up until Election Day, just talking to people in each of these states, both left and right, and see for myself if the United States is this divided. And that was really where it all started. I had met Evan a couple months prior. He is a 20-year-old living with his grandparents, and they have very opposing political views. So I thought he would be the perfect person to start with. Amy then received one of the highest honors a young lawyer could have, serving as a clerk. While I was working on the pilot episode, I hit up my friend Zen, because me and him worked on a bunch of projects in the past, and this is something I knew he'd be excited about. The only problem was, he lives in New York, and I live in LA. Welcome to LA. We don't even have an RV. It's on, bro. Let's go. Humdili, 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 humdili. All right, let me show, let me show. All right, all right. Because when Noah introduced this concept to me, it felt grand. I felt like I could add some kind of value to this and just kind of help it come to life more. I was like, no, ain't got shit planned out. So I'm just going to figure it out with him. I put a filter on it and I just like turned it down. If there was a word to describe what the first week in LA was like, I would say organization. Us mapping out reservations for the RV. We're just looking for an RV partner who believes in the social cause. Unfortunately, I, I just I can't. I don't feel comfortable doing that us getting our pitch deck together, getting the online presence for the project together, mapping things out with Sue as to how we're going to do this. I don't want you guys wasting time looking for me. I mean, we'll find the people, but don't worry about them. Sue served as like the social media manager and kind of the graphic person and the person to help us get our online presence out while we were focusing on the actual creation of the content. All right, let's try this again. I'm gonna be voting for Joe. They're gonna be voting for Donald. And I'm not gonna hate them for what they think. They're not gonna hate me for what I think. At the end of the day, we're all still gonna be family, you know? I'm Evan Mosshart. I'm 20 years old, and I was born here. Not here, not in this cave, but in California. I wouldn't really say that I have a career, but I was traveling doing model work, so I guess you could put that down. So right now, I'm staying with my grandparents on their ranch, and I'm gonna be here until I can save up enough money and move back out to New York. The ranch is about an hour, 45 minutes, northwest of Los Angeles, just in the middle of the desert. I live with a bunch of old people, and they all have semi-different backgrounds. A lot of them come from labor work, like 
My grandfather is a pile driver. He built bridges and blew up dams. He was raised by cowboys. So everyone in my family is super independent and we're always going to be very independent. And I think that just kind of left its mark on me with wanting to be independent. I don't think that my political views are shaped by my family because they're different from my family's. My family is very conservative and I'm not very conservative at all. You know, moving around a lot when I was a kid, I got to live with everybody, experience a whole bunch of different things and I think that kind of bred it in. I just lived my life. I went out and talked to people, I listened to people, I hear what they say and I take it in and analyze it for myself. There's a definite lack of critical thinking in our generation. We don't really take the time to sit down and think things. We just get our thoughts handed to us. And then that is our thought. That's what we think about it because that's what it says right there. We don't actually take the time to sit down and think, well, what if it's wrong? I think I learned that from living here. You know, just all the different voices I get to hear from all the different people that are in here and just take in their opinions and formulate it to how it compares to me. Every day, we're disagreeing and fighting and arguing. And, you know, it's not like he doesn't understand my points and I don't understand his points, but the generational gap, which we're experiencing in the world right now, is way more extreme than it has ever, ever been. So a lot of the ideas that our generation throws out and brings out, they, older people aren't gonna understand. And I don't think that they really can understand unless they were already understanding before. And I think a big part of why it can't change his viewpoints is because he watches fucking Fox News all day and reads Facebook. And I think that us kids our age do the exact same thing. We look at what we see on Instagram, we look at what our social media shows us, and we do the exact same thing. We make hard line opinions on something that might not even be true, you know? You know, I wasn't going to vote. I wasn't going to vote at all. I thought the whole election was bullshit. And I don't think it's going to make a difference. But I realized maybe a week and a half ago that I should vote, you know? Because even if it doesn't make a difference or make a change, I want to vote which, uh, which, with which party aligns with my wants. What made you come to that realization? <laughs> I saw an Instagram post that said, quit slacking around, just go vote. And I was like, yeah, all right. <laughs> How does it make you feel that Evan and you are both going to be voting for different people in this up and coming oh, wait, voting for different people in this up and coming election? I don't care. It's your misfortune and none of my own. Why should I worry about his problem? He's got to straighten up himself. I'm already straight. Everybody has their own perception of what is real. Who said what to who? And then, oh, I believe that, or oh, no, I don't believe that. That's our problem. We have to be able to sit down at the table, argue and scream at each other, and come up and be friends still, and, and having an edge uh, shaved off of the problems we've got, right? Just to be able to cut into the meat to make the problem work, right? And that's what we have to do. If we can't sit down and we can't try to be statesmen and try to have our pride and our ideas too, well, we got a lot of trouble. You want to go out in the El Camino? Get shots of that. I wrote this January 4th, 2019 in New York. You think your mind is free because you have free thought, but you're locked in thinking about the free thought that you have and why you have it, or may not, rather than actually using your own free thought and thinking freely. Are choices offered, or are choices fed? Stop caring, you'll find what you're looking for. Is this prejudice? Was that prejudice? Have I thought about my thoughts yet? Anything can be anything. 
It all depends on how you look at it. the video is just kind of like his reason in his head but i was like damn you know like even if i don't believe in what's going on i still have to like like do my part you know it's a, it's a lot of change that i don't vibe with with politics but you can change my mind on that you, you know what i mean trips up song was the outro to the pilot episode i feel like his reaction solidified what we both felt from looking at the pilot before anybody else like we knew it was possible based off of that we knew that we had something and that's actually when we changed the name of the series from uniting states project to young, young boats, boats run, run america, america. This really wasn't the original plan. We weren't supposed to take this car. This is the silver lemon, as I call it. We still don't have the RV. We don't have an exact plan of where we're going besides swing states. That's that's a pretty good plan. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, something, it's, it's like something. nine states, right? It's nine, ten states that we, we, we narrowed it down to. Yeah. We're gonna find out if we have the RV on Monday. So until then, we need to shoot these films, so... Uh, we're cleaning out this car right now. We're gonna go to Arizona tomorrow. All right. You ready? Let's go. Let's get it. So let's talk about this silver, this silver lemon. So this is a 2005 Mazda Tribute. It has 180,000 miles and a salvage title. We're going to Phoenix. Arizona is a swing state, which means that right now they're not quite sure if it's going to lean Democrat or Republican. Yeah. Hi. Hey. <laughs> um, all right, what are we doing today? We yeah. need to go to the polling booths. We're going to start with the church because that's going to be a whole vibe. Is that it? I don't know, but it got across. I don't see no voting action. Are you sure they're using it to vote right now? I just don't know. Let's go to uh, Tempe. Let's get it. They're not talking to us nice right now, but don't worry. I feel like in Tempe, they're going to talk to us nice. Are you voting? It's not going as planned. Now, did you vote yet? Did I vote yet? No. So, we're fucking up. We're still looking for a subject to talk to. We're going to find them, but like, it's dry right now. We're going to map it up. Arizona was a learning experience. It showed us that it's not always gonna work out. And I think that's a very important thing to know when you're working on a project like this, is that you're not gonna find the right person to talk to. Right. We thought we found the right person at the end. So, me and Noah just found the perfect person in Arizona to talk to. But she's working right now talking to other people to get them to vote. We asked her to, you know, to be part of this film for us, and she kind of denied us, but to kind of sweeten the deal, we brought us something sweet, you know what I mean? All right, let's see what happens, let's see what happens, let's go. The strawberry lemonade with a little side of corruption. She herself was not registered to vote, right. but her job was to get people to vote. Registered. So we were like, yo, this person's interesting. Let's get to know this person. Currently it is 10, 10 20. And we are on our way to what town are we going? I don't know where it is, but it's like 50 minutes away from Tempe. Tempe. Our last night in Phoenix, and we're hopefully finding our subject for our film. Hey, we're outside. My name is Ratiska Brown, and I'm from Alvin, South Carolina. I am a chemist. They're paying you to go out there to try to 
reaching amount of signatures to get people informed, which is awesome. When you hear people talk about their views, you're like, okay, well, you, you may sound like a Republican at this moment. And I'm like, okay, so me wanting to know the why, the more, I'm like, what is a Republican? What is it to be a Republican? What is it to be a Democrat? You know, I listen first, listen to understand, I just listen to speak, I try to understand their point of view. Because I know, I understand now that things could be said differently. We have to first hear someone's thought to reconstruct our own sometimes. But when we voice those thoughts, and we voice those opinions, and we, vo we voice those point of views, then I'm more open to say, hey, well, I never even thought that way, but this is the way I was thinking. And we're like, oh, well, maybe it could be both. And we're like, oh, we didn't think of that. We didn't think, oh, okay, cool. We found, we found something that we, we had in common. When do you think you'll start voting? I mean, I'm probably voting real soon. But not this one. I'm, I'm not positive. Arizona taught us when we found that first subject, we were not prepared to do the task at hand. We couldn't contextualize honestly, that person's opinion enough. We didn't get to do it justice, honestly. That's the yeah. bottom line of it. Game plan, call this lady Shelly, see what's up with this RV, and get it going. So in the midst of us looking for the RVs, right, we were hitting up a bunch of RV sites, and I got a hold of this lady named Shelly. Um, are you open to our idea? Shelly ends up being interested in what we're doing because she's an ex-military teacher. I will let you guys have it after, you know, the election. Yo, we did it. Let's go! We, we have the RV. Day. We Next have the RV. RV. Uh, we were dumb hyped. I remember we were that. Hyped. We were so hyped. Because we like, Arizona so was hyped. going like this, and then we get that phone call. Shelly like, <laughs> made it go up. Shelly skyrocketed all of our hopes, and we were just super excited. But there was a condition. What type of paperwork would you give me to ensure that you're not running off with my RV? We needed RV insurance without owning an RV. After Arizona, we were obviously defeated, but at the same time, we realized that we just need to get after this. Like, we can't be waiting for an RV. We can't be waiting for an insurance. Like, it doesn't work. Like, we just need to go. So Pennsylvania or Florida? Florida would be such a switch up. We're just for the record, we're, we're talking about something that we have not talked about yet. I know, but it's not <laughs> that you know the vibes. You know the vibes. Don't make can it we just go to Miami? Yeah, we can just go to Miami. That'd be lit as shit. After Arizona, we got on a super early flight to Miami. We had a layover in Dallas. It was like six in the morning. It was like, it was I was early. asleep. I was, no, was out. Passed I'm like, out. snoozing, snoozing. And then I see this kid, you know, just moving around through the airport. And I see his sneakers and he's cool. So I'm like, yo, like, what's up? He ended up being one of our two subjects for Florida. And we found him before we even got into Florida. He lived in St. Cloud, Florida. We knew nothing of St. Cloud, Florida. Me and Noah both just know Miami. I didn't even know where St. Cloud was. But we said, we're going to pull up. He was going to Orlando, so we decided we'd go to Miami, see, you know, what the climate is like. And <laughs> see what the after, climate is like. <laughs> debauchery. money so we got a nice little Prius that took us up to St. Cloud Florida where it is vastly different from Miami. St. Cloud Florida is very Republican very conservative super red. Yo yo we outside bro. bro what's up? What's up? <laughs> How are you bro? What up bro? Pull up. Yo now do you want to give us uh, two claps with your hand? I'm 24.
to stay in relationship with God. And at least for me, you know, that's something that's essential in my life. It's about love. You know, that's what Jesus came and did. And so it just starts from there. Our goal as a Christian is to be the image of that. I'm a Christian before I say I'm, I'm an American. That's just the way I see it. I think it just goes with like my faith. Where does my faith align more with, you know? And I can't, I'm not out here to tell you I'm Republican, I'm a Democratic, but that's just the way I see it. I'm a Christian before I'm a citizen. I have a couple friends who believe different, like, you know, some are just like pro-Trump. I have some that are so pro-Biden and, and I've seen them clash, you know, like on their little arguments. And I'm just like, I'm just watching, you know, cause I, I can't really put my input besides just like observe, you know? Observing is important before even speaking. I can't force anybody to be open-minded, but I can share I am open-minded myself. You, you won't learn if you're closed-minded. Cancel culture is, is the opposite of love. Me and my friend Steven, we have like, you know, conversations where we disagree on things like harshly, but like, it's okay, you know? And I'm, I'm all about confrontation. Uh, Cause again, it's just sparking a conversation. My name is Steven Rosado. Um, I am 23 years old and I am from Puerto Rico, but I moved to Florida around the age of three or four. A lot of people believe I should vote my religion, right? Or I should vote my faith. I'm still trying to understand what that looks like because that looks different in every state. And that even looks different by like what church you go to, even in the same state, you know, like it's all different when it comes to that. And that's why like me and Nadia were so big on like, well, hey, we're just gonna like invite God into this decision and really just figure out what that looks like. As of right now, who do you think you're, you're, you're leaning towards more in terms of two candidates? Um, I, I can't tell you that right now, if I'm honest. That's why I have, what you said, two weeks? Two weeks to get more information. Like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna tell you Trump, I don't wanna tell you Biden, but uh, I'm trying to do the most educating I can. How does abortion work with religion? That's actually uh, uh, Man, that's a hard question, because I, I don't want to be insensitive, but I also do believe like what the Bible says. I'm still learning about the subject. I'm still trying to understand it a little bit deeper. Like, yes, I believe what the Bible says, but it's so much more than just like a yes or a no. Like, I, I don't know. It, it's much deeper. Like, you know, it's not just black and white. Yeah, like, I don't know. The it, humanistic part of me would say, yeah, it's a woman's choice. You know, like, yeah. you know, she's the one carrying it. But the Bible doesn't doesn't agree with that. I, I don't think there is a choice. You know, it's, you should give birth to the baby. But as a human, like, me being flesh and being real, it's like, you know, there is, there is the option. That God gives us free will. You do what you want with it. But are you serving him, you know, with, with the decision you make? How do you guys feel about funding with the police? Some people say we need to defund the police. Some people say we need to invest more into training and making them better. How do y'all feel about the police right now? Bro, people still need someone to call when they're in trouble. We do need police. I can't say how to train them because I don't know. You know, but there's people who are educated who can help. Doctors go through years of training and stuff like that and cops have a gun in their hands and we only give them like what, maybe a year or two? Like, I don't know the specific amount of time, but like, I think it is more training. I just think it's more about policing our police and maybe giving them more education to make sure that they have what it takes to make those rational decisions. Investing in the people, into the community, then you can help stop crime. And I feel really strongly about this because like I, I did get arrested when I was a kid. People who came from broken homes tend to go to gangs and all these different things. Why don't we fix the root of the problem, right? The, the communities, the homes, the, the getting them a, a different way, get more into sports programs and all these different things. Like throwing money into that so that we don't have to worry about, okay, stopping all these different crimes, that we can just catch it before it gets to it, you know? It's kind of like, let's say your trees outside is bad, and we're just picking off the bad fruit. It's always gonna produce bad fruit because the root is bad. So we gotta focus on, on cutting the tree and fixing the tree so that we don't have to keep picking because we're gonna be picking forever. When you said defund the police, your, your first reaction was What's negative. That? That's what it sounds like. It's that, exactly, that's what it sounds like. I want you guys to do your own research on that. Yeah, absolutely. That's my word for it. But everything that you guys just said right now it falls under it. what defunding the police is. Yeah. I feel like I'm a bad guy now just because the word defund sounds bad, yeah. you know? I educate myself a lot through podcasts. Like when it comes to social issues and stuff like that, there's certain people that I trust to be able to talk about things. And I'm like, okay, cool. I really disagree with that. Or, hey, that was a really good point. I'm going to implement that. Through having conversation, like how else are you going to learn to educate yourself if you're not 
going out there having conversations not with just people you're comfortable with but people that challenge you right well why do you think the way that you think right why do you believe what you believe in and just really sitting down with people and just finding out their stories man I have immigrant family, so they don't really have the ability to vote. So I didn't think I was as important as I am now, that I have the chance to vote. Millennials in our generation is so fixed on, we want change, we want change. We're the first ones to go out rioting because um, like the injustice we see around the world and the social issues, but the real things that we can actually do, we don't take part of. Understanding and realizing that we do have power, kind of like we're locked in a cell, but the key is in our hand, and that key is voting, right? Like, a small little change that does actually make an impact. It even changed my mind, because honestly, like, I have a, the mail-in ballot at home right now, and I haven't opened it, because I'm like, oh, I don't know, like, all these people suck, and everything's gonna be bad, and one's like a racist, and the other one's like whatever. But I've never, kind of what Nadi was saying, never took the time to actually understand and see what I can really do to fix it. Us millennials and us Gen Z really can make an influence, and not just talk about it, but be about it. The only thing I want from you guys is yeah. to let us know who you vote for yeah. and what you guys are done. Yeah, this is going to be amazing. From Florida, we kind of had an understanding of themes. We had already talked about how the generational gap plays a role in voting, and now we had how religion plays a role in voting. Mm -hmm. So at this point, we're like, okay, we have two themes down. What's the next theme? We get to Philadelphia and we decide that the theme for this episode is going to be the, the black, black vote. vote. And we're trying to figure out a way to meet people, you know, because we still, we don't know anyone in North Philly. So we're like, all right, how are we going to find people to make an episode on? And Zen comes up with the idea that we need weed and Hennessy. As long as we have these two things, we'll be able to find somebody to talk to. So we end up renting a white Prius. And I remember it was a Thursday night. It was like 11 p.m. I was already fucked up. And we decided to just start driving around the hood looking for a liquor store. We walk in and we ask them, hey, you got Henny? And the liquor store guy looks at us and says, no, ain't no Henny. Ain't no Henny anywhere. Not here, not nowhere. And me and nowhere are like, what the hell are you talking about? There's no Henny. Basically, he told us that during the riots throughout 2020, all of the liquor stores in the hood got looted for Henny. While we're having this conversation, there's this woman and she looks at us and goes, I know where you can get Hennessy. And both and Zen and I are looking at each other like, all right, this like, is sketchy, like, this, like, we ain't like, got no better like, shot. We have no other options. Like, might as well, like, we're gonna have to take this one up. She's like, just wait outside. Like, I gotta finish something up. All right, so what I'm gonna do, y'all gonna um, wait for me on this thing. We gonna go around up to the teeth. Mm. She comes up to the window, knocks on it, and says, hey, Turn your lights off, roll your windows up, lock your doors, give me the money for the henny and the weed, I will be right back. And while she's walking away, she yells to the whole hood, they're with me, they're with me, they're with me. She yells that to the whole hood. It's like, everyone knows that. We are not ops. Um, I gotta take him to okay, he's, he want, he want crack, so I gotta take him to a block, and I'm leaving him there, and I'm 15, so I'm getting a car with y'all. All right, cool, so you want to, so you just gonna follow me? Yo, you can just follow me. That's just the trip. realest shit I've seen all trip. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. Crack his back. Mind you, there was like drug dealers, there's junkies, there's all sorts of craziness. It was happening. hot, it was hot. It was the block was, it was hot. hot. And when it we pulled hot. up in this shining white Prius, they knew <laughs> they were like they, they don't belong here. They knew we didn't belong there. Hey, it's okay. the bottle, right? Yo, yo. She came back with our honey and yeah, we said, yo, you wanna vibe? So we ended up going with her and then just drinking Henny and smoking weed in front of her house. You want a shot? Hold on, you want a shot? You want one of these? And he do the voting thing too. They with the voting. Really? Yeah. Oh, my God. Look at his shirt. Look at his shirt. Bro. Oh. Yo, you Wait, let me take a video of that. Let me take a video of that. Yo. I'm smoking a blunt. I have my camera with a cup of Henny 
interviewing Yo, Sweetie. I remember and, this moment. And that's how we made that episode. Like, that's how we met Sweetie. 70% of our kids from 18 to 21 is trying to survive. More of them got a gun in their hand than a book. Everyone is talking about taxes. Everyone is talking about Corona. Well, what have they, anybody said something about the kids? So why should they vote? You really want my vote? You haven't even acknowledged me? <laughs> you know, do I matter? Anything you want to do, you can do here. You want to get up and go kill somebody, you can. You want to get up and go make a million dollars, you can. If you want to get up and go pollute the neighborhood with drugs, you can. I seen that 12 year old on the corner the other day selling drugs during homeschool time. Last year he would have been in school, right? But this year it's homeschool. He don't want to be in the house with his parents. He don't want to be around his surroundings. Now he's out in the corner. Twenty dollars for four bags of weed is a gold mine here. If you look up all the middle schools and look at their ratings. Some of these schools' the stars are one, my man. Yeah. One out of five. Who the fuck is y'all hiring? We don't have the same choices and opportunities that's given around the world to everybody else. We don't have these same choices here in North Philly. I'm a single mother and I have to work two jobs to pay a $700 rent and spend no time with my kids just to make bare minimal. Tanisha looking official today. Very official. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's not time for the camera yet. <laughs> Our ancestors fought for this, so like it's only right that we go out and vote. I vote because the man stood for the vote. And harm was done to the man. It gave me an opportunity to vote. Then y'all see what Trump just did to us? I'm ready to get him out of here. Your vote is, is, is your voice. And you're saying that you need something, that you want something. When you vote, you should have a sense of pride thinking this is the beginning for my change, you know? And even if things doesn't change overnight, it's not a personal change, not personal growth, you know? It changes as a whole. You gotta do your part. You just don't vote, sit down, go watch, go back on Twitter and think it's all over with. No, you do your part, you get out of the community. You make people aware, because nobody's gonna do it for us. And we have to push the other people that's making the laws to, to help us out, but we have to start. And if we show them that we care about our kids and their future, then they ain't got no other choice. But as long as we don't care, they throw them in the jails and giving them guns and labeling them felons at 18 and 19, it's not giving them no direction. This is why I want to run for city council, so I can be one of those voices five, ten years from now when it matters. And like, look, y'all have to help us. My dream is to be everything that I'm not supposed to be. Our life is planned for us pretty much in Philly. When you grow up in a certain neighborhood, you're born into a poverty-stricken family, and alcoholics, drug addicts, drug dealers. Nobody really got a college education. Not having that structure as a child puts something inside of me that I can't settle. Whether who the president is, I'm buying my home in February. No matter who the president is, I'm going to run for city council in four years. No matter who the president is, I'm going to have my degree in a year and a half. So, and that's the way you got to have it, no matter what. You know, you gotta know your your goal. If you don't have a goal, you're not gonna care about the goal of America or a goal of all of us as a whole because you don't have a set goal for your life. So young people just know what you want out of life. And it's not rap, it's not drug dealing. <laughs> it's knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And when you have that about voting, you'll see how important it is. Well, I'm the voice of North Philly. Tanisha Sweetie Jacobs, 09 to 16th Street. And I tell people all the time that you gotta know where you come from, know where you go. Wait, hey, give me in it. The only conservative viewpoints that we had up to this point in Philadelphia 
were um, some of the viewpoints of Naudi and Steven back in uh, Florida. Mm -hmm. But it didn't really represent conservatives at its at their heart. It didn't really represent that. So we needed more. We needed the red. We needed, we needed something some more red. red. So we ended up going to North Carolina. We get to North Carolina. We find out about a Trump rally that was happening in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Ooh, you ready for that Trump tastic shit? Bro, I'm excited. Yo, this is a, a historic night. Night before um, night election. before election day. Trump has been talking mad shit. Joe Biden is a corrupt politician who raked in millions from China. Headed to see Trump. Or Trump supporters for the day. Where's my president? Trump! Are you a YouTuber? Born in the USA! Yeah. I'm voted for Trump because of really the morality and what he stands for with abortion or gun rights and things that I find important. Religious freedom, for example, when COVID started and they're trying to close churches, my dad's a pastor and so we suffered from that for a little while. I was just thankful for the stand he took in trying to open back churches and not using a crisis for political advantage. I'm Sienna Catherine, I'm 23. I'm from Apex, North Carolina. My name is Brianna Fanning, I'm 20, and I live in Pequay Green in North Carolina. This is actually the first time I've ever been to a rally, and I figured it was like my last shot to see him in person, so I'm really glad I did. What's the greatest threat to America right now? This proposal? The left. Yes the left honestly and the censorship because they've gotten a hold of everything they've gotten a hold of all the companies schools and they're even infiltrating the churches and they're making it to where we don't have true free speech only leftist speech if you were both president what would you do education reform i have an education reform plan that i've been working on since i was 18 and i wanted to run for president and use that as my platform actually what's the reform um it would make it so that a public school would be a hybrid of charter, public, private, Montessori, and taxpayer dollars would go to it. But you would be tested to see which subjects needed which type of education, and then you would go to those specific classes. You know, my grandfather's been sick for a while, and so I kind of see like how messed up the hospital system is. As liberal as that originally sounds, like it needs to be reformed, especially the pharmaceutical industry. Like charging for life-saving drugs out the wazoo is so ethically wrong. It's the government's job to like make sure that people aren't getting taken advantage of. It shouldn't be $2,800 for an x-ray. No, it shouldn't be. Are you for universal health care? No. No, no. I think the problem is we're focusing on the wrong issue. If you reformed the pharmaceutical and hospital industry so it wasn't so expensive to go to the hospital, then you wouldn't need extensive health care. Make things fair, so whether it's media, education, put the information out there, don't lie or twist it, and then let people learn and make their own decisions. You should be able to speak your mind and not feel canceled and not feel oppressed as a conservative viewpoint. We're not racist, we're all inclusive for everybody. You know, we have to have healthy dialogue. I'm a Christian and so I believe in biblical morals and values, just treating each other with respect. Like, hey, we can actually talk about this stuff without it becoming a personal attack. But I think both sides has forgotten that. I also try to discuss the issues and I try to come from a biblical stance. I always try to back um, my politics up with the Bible and I try to challenge people who have different religions about what their views really are and where their views come from if they don't come from Jesus. All of my friends are voting, but I'd say it's pretty half and half. You need to be involved, like you can't have an opinion if you don't vote. Use your voice. We have a chance every two and four years to elect someone, and if you don't use your voice, then you don't get to talk about it. I think I have a couple that might be voting for Joe just because they watch fake news and stuff like that. I mean, they just don't know any better. They've been fed a bunch of lies. I use social media. That's how I find out a lot of my news, Twitter, Instagram. Fox News, listen to Rush Limbaugh a lot, conservative all the way. It is November 7th at 11.39 in the morning. That's the headline for Fox right now. I won this election by a lot. Now, if I go to CNN, their headline is Joe Biden elected as president. 
is not the feeling yet that uh, that's the, the tech it's going to be chaos let's go Granny's a whole vibe. There's a clear reason why the left is portrayed as the left and the right is portrayed as the right. It's branding is what it is. It's, it's what branding. sells. You can't be a pawn in the game. You really have to like understand where the information is coming from, compare it to other sources, mm -hmm. not just what you agree with, but with things that you disagree with. That is what's missing the most in media right now is the fact that it's not real. It's already premeditated. There's already a narrative. You only pick stories that fit your narrative. The ratings want to see the divisive, oh, left says this, right says this, and mm -hmm. that's, what, that's what sells, but that's not the true state of the country. Politics has become like a dehumanizing like tactic and people forget that we're all humans. Just because we disagree on politics doesn't mean we should disrespect each other. Life is more than politics, you know. But finding that common ground allows people to continue to work together despite disagreements in hand. I've always been able to civilly disagree, like agree to disagree kind of a person. I like to have friends that see things a different way because you really don't know what you believe until you have to like give an account for it, you know? As someone who has a gay brother, as a Republican, well, I just try to be really open-minded with, with all of that, no matter what my views are. At the end of the day, we're all humans and we all love whoever we want. Other people are gonna think differently than you and other people are gonna act differently than you. And as long as it's not gonna like potentially, you know, endanger me or hurt me, it's not that big of a deal. No one's gonna be the exact same as you. The biggest thing for us to, you know, for us to all get along with is just understanding that everyone is different and we all come from different backgrounds. We need to take the time to put ourselves in someone else's shoes. You have the right to choose who you want to love, how you want to live, and that is what America gives, freedom. No two people think alike. And that is what makes an opinion more valuable. Just go outside of your neighborhood and just speak to other people and just venture out in the world. And I promise you, you will be enlightened in a way that school cannot enlighten you. Once you understand what shapes somebody's opinion, you can accept the way they think, even if it differs from the way you think. It's not about what color you are, what gender you are. It's really about do you have exorbitant amounts of money or not? That's really what it is. So we're all together. We're all in the same family. What we're lacking right now is an outlet that accurately represents people's opinions, especially millennials and Gen Z who have mixed views that aren't left or right anymore. I look at America kind of like modern day Rome. And Rome will collapse unless there's a change. With the advent of the internet globalization and understanding history in a way that people didn't understand before, we can make a positive change and steer the country in a way that benefits the people opposed to tears the people apart.